Hi, this is a quick intro to Holo, a marketplace for peer-to-peer -peer application hosting. First, a bit of history. In 1968, Paul Barron issued a famous, now famous, paper on centralized, decentralized, and distributed networks. After the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 1960s, researchers had begun looking for a way to create a more resilient communication system one that could withstand even an overwhelming nuclear attack. Barron conjectured that centralized systems were inherently fragile because a failure at even a single point might bring down the entire thing. And he proposed that distributed networks would be far more resilient. This was the founding document of the internet. The internet today, however, has been centralizing in some not so fortunate ways. A little over a year ago, an Amazon employee accidentally hit the wrong key or entered the wrong command and caused a failure of thousands of applications, collapsing a huge swath of the internet. The way that Recode framed it was one incorrect command and the whole internet suffers. Another way to put it was when Amazon sneezes, the internet catches a cold. Just a few days ago, there was an attack on Google and Amazon and the DNS system. This attack enabled hackers to steal over $150,000 from users of my Ether wallet. These are a result of today's increasing centralization. Why does this matter? Because centralized cloud computing undermines the founding goal of the internet. Resilience. Holo is taking a stand. This is what application hosting looks like today. On the left, we've got a building. This is a data center owned by Amazon in Oregon. It's one of many that they own. And on the right is the kind of servers that sit inside of that data center. Today, application developers that want their apps served to visitors turn to giant companies like Amazon and their massive data centers to do the job. These data centers aren't special. They're using standard hardware to serve that content. There's nothing magical about these computers. Well, each of us has idle computing capacity on our laptops and desktops. Our computers are actually quite powerful machines in themselves. When I'm using mine for internet or PowerPoint, it's capable of so much more, often thousands of times more work than I'm making that machine do. Globally, the amount of idle computing power actually dwarfs even Amazon and the other web hosting giants. This is what we think application hosting should look like in the future. Holo enables anyone to compete with Amazon for app hosting by offering the spare computing capacity on their own laptop, desktop, or other computer. When your computer hosts an application, instead of paying Amazon, the developer pays you. Airbnb built a business by making it so that when you rent your spare bedroom, it helps you pay your mortgage. Well, Holo is doing something similar. With Holo, when you rent your spare computing capacity, it helps you pay for your internet or your computer itself. But unlike renting your spare bedroom, with Holo, you don't end up washing any sheets. Your computer does the work and you reap the reward. So how big of an opportunity is this really? Well, it's not small. Amazon's the third most valuable company in the world. And AWS, their app hosting division, makes up about 10% of their revenue, but more profit than the entire rest of the company combined. So in other words, application hosting is Amazon's cash cow. And if you want to be blunt about it, Polo is aiming to do to the cash cow of the third most valuable company on earth, what Uber did to taxis. Except that with Holo, 99% of the money goes directly to the people whose computers are doing the work. That's right, we only take a 1% or less transaction fee. That 1% goes towards building, maintaining, and improving Holo. 
plus 50% of our revenue goes towards improving Holochain, the underlying protocol that Holo is built on and that many other open source projects are starting to be built on. Some of you might be thinking, hasn't this been done already? Well, actually, no. Though lots of folks have imagined doing something like this for quite a long time. Last year, it was even the plot of Silicon Valley, a show on HBO. Forbes described Holo as turning internet fiction into reality. But there's two things that we've done that are enabling us to accomplish what so many others have dreamed of in the past, but not been able to pull off. The first is Holochain, and the second is Holofuel. Let's take a look at each. Holochain is a new way of running truly peer-to-peer -peer applications. In the past, in order to serve content, your computer had to store that content. If it didn't live on your machine, there was no way for you to give it to someone else. But Holochain makes it so that this is no longer needed. Your computer can fetch the content from the peer-to-peer -peer application right when it's needed. That enables just-in-time content delivery, and we think it's a game changer. The World Economic Forum called Holochain one of the most integral technology projects in the blockchain space. The second innovation, Holofuel. Holofuel basically enables us to accomplish a couple of things. If you're trying to do app hosting on global scale, it involves huge volumes of transactions. Think about your own browser history and how many web pages you visited. Then think about how many people there are on the planet doing the same thing. It's not small. But individual transactions, the payments for this kind of web hosting, those tend to be very small. And so Holofuel gives us a couple of advantages because it's a really efficient new form of crypto accounting. Holofuel can handle a high volume of low value transactions. So if we do a little comparison, the Visa network can handle about 56,000 transactions per second. And Ethereum can handle something like 15 or 20. Bitcoin, by the way, is down there below 10. Transactions per second, however, are only relevant to these systems because they're doing sequential processing of transactions. That becomes meaningless when you look at a system that operates using parallel processing like Holofuel. Thanks to parallel processing of transactions, Holofuel can simultaneously handle millions of transactions. Second, transaction fees on the existing payment architectures are high. For Visa, it's something like 2% plus 10 cents. For Bitcoin, it's something like $1.35 per transaction. For Ethereum, it's something like 11 cents a transaction. And Litecoin, it's something like 5 cents. But if you need to spend even 5 cents to pay someone a penny, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. A transaction fee needs to be far less than the value being transferred. Otherwise, it's not worth recognizing that contribution. Holofuel is efficient enough for microtransactions, that is, transactions that are worth less than a cent. The fee on Holofuel is always 1% or less. So if you send somebody one penny, our fee is 1 one hundredth of a penny. Holofuel is a mutual credit system. This has been around for a long time. It's basically a double entry accounting system where different parties have account balances. And when I transfer money to you, my account balance goes down and your account balance goes up. I agree to this, you agree to this, and we're done. This is a centuries old tried and true accounting method. But now, thanks to Holochain and cryptography, we're able to distribute, secure, and extend the capacities of this proven accounting method. I wanna talk a little bit for a minute about pricing. We're in the middle of an ICO. It's about to wrap up tomorrow, actually. 
but I want to make visible for the people who are participating as well as for people afterwards. Why did we choose to price our system the way that we did? Well, we started out by doing some benchmarking against Ethereum. People kept comparing this to Ethereum, so we went and took a look at what the differences were. And we built three different applications to do some comparison testing on how expensive it would be to create things on Ethereum versus Holo. We did an application that was basically a peer-to-peer -peer version of Twitter. We used some code off of the Ethereum web page, the home page of the Ethereum website, the DAO, the Distributed Autonomous Organization code. And we also did the code for our own whitelisting process for our ICO. Depending on the app, because e different apps use different amounts of bandwidth, storage, or processing power, Holo was somewhere between 100,000 times and 1 million times more efficient than Ethereum. So we pegged our price relative to ETH. We're offering 10,000 times as much computing for the same price as you could get on Ethereum. The initial community offer is pegging one ETH at 4,410,747 and 31 cents <laughs> holos. <laughs> now people sometimes ask, why so many? Well, because we're trying to do such tiny transactions, we'd rather use lots of tokens or units, actually in our case, of fuel, than have things like, I sent you 0 0.000001 fuel. The minimum purchase for our ICO is one-tenth of one ETH. At the moment, that's somewhere around 55 or 60 euros. Why did we choose 10,000 times cheaper when our benchmarking showed that we were 100,000 or a million times more efficient? Well, that's pretty simple. We had two reasons. One, we wanted to highlight the benefits of our better performance. And two, we wanted to create a gap to enable a two-sided market to emerge. I'll cover each of these in turn. First, highlighting the benefits. What does 10,000 times cheaper actually look like? Well, if computing power were cars, the same amount of money that would buy you a remote control car on Ethereum could buy you a real car on Holo. And that real car would be a Lamborghini. That is what a 10,000 times price difference looks like. An RC toy worth 40 bucks versus a Lamborghini worth 400,000. Second reason why we chose 10,000 times as our price point is that we wanted to create a gap to enable a two-sided market to emerge. So what are we doing here? Well, it's pretty simple. By pricing Holo at only 10,000 times cheaper, we are actually under-promising on what our network is likely to be able to deliver. Hosting costs could be five or 15 or 50 times cheaper. And when Holo goes live, hosts should be able to undercut our offer. That opens up the opportunity for them to, consent, to set competitive rates and earn decent margins. And for holders of Holo Fuel, that would mean that you get more bang for buck. It means that you might end up with the computing power equivalent of not just one, but of two or 12 or 20 Lamborghinis. Not that we'd squander our Holo Fuel on something as silly as Lamborghinis, of course. So the question you have to ask yourself, and that I ask myself, is if Holo is successful, in undercutting the cost of distributed app hosting by, say, 50,000 times? Do you still want to be hodling ETH? Thank you. <laughs>